everyone, my name is Sandra, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm a developer advocate at Slack. Today I'll be walking through how to create and use global shortcuts with your Slack API app. Global shortcuts are an entry point to your app's functionality and an easy way for end users to find and engage with your app. Global shortcuts can be found on any channel on Slack and are good when enabling functionality that's a little bit more broad, such as filling out a form or conducting a quick search. For today, I will be using Tasks app as an example. If you're not familiar with our video series, Tasks app was built by the developer relations team on Slack in order to help you, the developer, become a little bit more familiar with the Slack platform, the features that we offer, and overall, build better apps on Slack. If you like to watch the other videos, we've linked them in the description box below, but you don't need to watch them in order to follow along with this one. With that said, let's get started. If you've watched the first few videos, then you would have already created an app that has all the settings it needs to work. If you haven't, then that's the first thing you'll need to do. You can easily create an app and replicate the task app specifically by copying and pasting the manifest.yaml file found in the GitHub repository, which we've also linked in the description below. In case you're creating an app from scratch, make sure you enable interactivity and add a new shortcut. This can all be done from the interactivity and shortcut section found in your app's configuration site. Task app uses socket mode, which you might have already noticed. This means that all interactivity happens via a web socket connection. But in case you rather not use socket mode, you should be enabling or um, submitting a request URL. A request URL will help Slack know where your app is listening for all the interactivity requests. So make sure you choose one. Lastly, just ensure that you're, that you're familiar with this page, that you know where to find this information and how to edit your, your shortcuts information as this might come in handy as uh, when you begin to code. On Slack, one of the places you can find global shortcuts is by clicking the blue lightning bolt found to the right of the message composer box. At the moment, your shortcut doesn't do anything. You might have noticed that already. Um, so let's change that. Global shortcuts should trigger modals. The tasks app shortcut is going to trigger a modal, which will enable the end user to create a new task by filling out to different input fields in that modal. And when someone triggers a shortcut by, for example, selecting it from that um, blue lightning bolt, your app will receive an interactivity payload or an interaction payload. And the interaction payload contains a lot of helpful information about the interaction itself and who invoked it. Since we're using socket mode, the request will come via a web socket connection, as I mentioned earlier. And um, whether you're using socket mode or a request URL, it's good to note that, well, the bolt syntax is the same for both. And once you've received the request, the most important thing, of course, is to make sure your app is handling that request and providing a suitable response. Let's take a look at how Tasks app responds to the interaction payload. Navigate to the listeners directory and you'll find a shortcuts directory and then click on the global-new-task.js file. This file runs a callback function that will open a modal after the user interacts with your shortcut. The function takes in three arguments. The, the first is the shortcut argument, which contains the interaction payload. The ACK argument that acknowledges your app has received the interaction. And the client argument needed to make API calls to the web API. This function will make a call to the views.open method. This method is absolutely necessary to open a modal. You can't open a modal without it. Views.open requires a trigger ID. 
which is the value that will come through in the interaction payload. The trigger ID is a unique uh, value that expires after three seconds. So make sure your app is handling it immediately. The views.open method takes in a token, a trigger ID, and a view parameter. The token we're using is the bot XOXB token, which you created when you installed your app on your workspace. The token is saved as an environment variable on the .m file and initialized on the app.js file, so you won't need to declare it again when calling views.open. The trigger ID, as I mentioned earlier, can be found on the interaction payload you receive when the user interacts with your app. And finally, the view is a JSON payload that defines what the modal actually looks like for the end user. We have a designated directory for modal views in order to keep the code a little bit neater. So for this API call, we're actually importing the view from the user interface directory under modals. So I will dive deeper into the structure of modals and how we're using them in the next video. For now, I wanted you to see the general global shortcut setup, how to use them and how to respond to an interactive payload. That's it. We've created a global shortcut that invokes a modal. I hope you found this video helpful. We'll continue to release videos every two weeks and every video will feature a different kind of Slack API functionality. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about today or would like to contribute to the Tasks app, please do so by opening up an issue on the GitHub repository. That's it for me today. See you next time.